Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 17th of November 2024. And last week, gold fell over $100, marking the largest decline for a week in the past three years. Silver declined over a dollar. Now analysts are feeling they have further to fall. Do we agree? Or do we perhaps think there may be a short-term bounce? Well, to find out, let's take a look. Gold fell $121 last week, falling from $2,685 to 2564 having hit a high of 2689 and a low of 2538 a fall of 4.5%. Gold spread between high and low was a sizable $151. Last weekend, we said gold would trade between 2550 and 2700 It closed within this range, but did dip below our outlier forecast low by $12. In sterling terms, it was down £45 at £2,034, and in euros, it fell €72, euros at 2436 euros silver fell one dollar and six cents falling from 31 dollars 33 to 30 dollars 27 having hit a high of 31.59 and a low of 29.71 a fall of 3.4 percent that is three consecutive weeks of similar percentage falls for silver the difference between its high and low was 1.88 Dollars. Last weekend, we predicted silver would trade between $30 and $32, and then we said, with $31.25 to $33 as outliers. For those who commented and noticed our er error, thank you. The outlier low was misread by us and should have read $29.25 to $33, not $31.25 to $33. In sterling terms, go- silver closed at £24.05, and five pence. that's down 24 pence. And in euros, it closed at 28.84 euros, that's down 0.50 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell one point, from 85.7 to 1 to 84.7 to 1. Bitcoin currently stands at $91,200, that's up. $14,700 following the previous week's rise of over $7,000. U.S. equities were lower. Dow Jones down 544 at 43,445. The S&P 500 down 125 at 5,870. The Nasdaq Composite down 606 at 18,680. And the FTSE 100 down 9 points at 8,063. On the positive front, oils were also lower. Brent crude down $2.83 at $71.04 and WTI crude down $3.36 at $67.02. Dollar index is up a whopping 1.69 on the week at 106.69. Now last week, we said to watch out for the CPI data on Wednesday, the PPI data on Thursday and retail sales on Friday. Well... CPI, inflation, year-over-year increased from 2.4 to 2.6%, while the core rate remained unchanged at 3.3%, still well above the 2% Fed target. PPI figures, this is producer price index figures, year-over-year rose from 1.9 to 2.4%, and core PPI from 3.3 to 3.5%. These figures between them caused gold and silver prices to drop to their lowest level for the week. Slightly stronger retail sales on Friday, however, kept in check precious metals attempting to rise off their lows, thereby limiting any real price recovery. Now, before we examine gold and silver more closely, next week's data is unlikely to be impactful, as there is very little being announced within the inflation, growth or job spheres. That said, we have a number of Fed officials giving testimony and so we may glean further thoughts as to their view on a December rate cut, which, in spite of the high dollar, still looks just about possible. We personally would wait until January, but the Fed may think 
this could send out the wrong signal to markets. We, however, feel that PPI, normally a reasonable indicator as to pipeline inflation, is giving the United States a stark warning. Gold has now suffered its largest weekly fall in over three years, and the US dollar at one stage rose to its year high exceeding 107. Who would have believed this when it was anticipated and expected we were going to see the dollar actually fall just below the 100 index. Earlier in the week, technical analysts were publicly stating that they thought gold would hold at $2,600, which it didn't. And now quoting the next support level around 2533, which could then breach to 2471, was super strong support at 2390. The stronger than expected economic data, such as October retail sales rising 0.4%, and revised September figures, the dollar's strength reduced gold's appeal among international buyers. Rising treasury yields are adversely affecting gold, and this dollar's strength may indeed, ironically, force the Fed to lower rates in December, even though Jerome Powell said on Thursday to business leaders in Dallas that policymakers do not need to be in a hurry to cut rates. Something we've said for a while. The commentary around the market now suggests rates will remain higher for longer, and this does not bode well for precious metals, especially as market fears begin to accept that potential Trump tariffs will be inflationary, which we said many months ago before this view started to gain traction. The market view currently is that a cut in the December rate has a probability factor of 59%, down from 83%, and then no further cuts until March. Save any geopolitical disaster, gold's high for the year is already in, and it may take a good six months for it to reach that level again. That said, we are still bullish gold, especially during the Trump presidency term. And so for those who bought recently, as long as you did so for the medium to long term, you should be absolutely fine. Day traders, well, that may be a different matter, at least short term. Silver has broadly followed gold, though the $30 level at least short term has been supportive. If gold declines further this coming week, we have no doubt that silver will fall below $30 and begin to test $29.50. That said, on the positive front, according to the Silver Institute and Metals Focus, Demand for silver in industrial applications is expected to grow by 7% year-over-year in 2024, reaching a record 700 million ounces amid a deficit market supply. This will curtail any downside, so please do not expect to see $24 silver again. Technical analysts at FX Empire predict that immediate support lies at $29.71, with further support levels at 29.19 and 28.67, if selling pressure continues. On the upside, silver needs to climb past the $31.10 level to hint at any recovery. In our view, we still have around $100 now war premium. We did have $200 war premium in gold and potentially a $100 interest rate premium which means for us the lowest we would expect to see gold fall to is $2,350, unless the Fed finds it necessary to raise rates again. So that's our absolute flaw. No one should underestimate the fear effect the potential Trump tariffs are having on the market, though. If gold falls to $2,350, then silver could indeed fall to $2,750. To the upside, gold could jump back to $26.50 over the next couple of weeks and silver reach $33. But currently the odds are against it unless there is a change in sentiment or the dollar at last weekends. So what do we expect this coming week? Well, gold to trade between $2,500 and $2,600 with $2,450 and $2,650 as outlier. Silver, we expect to trade between $29.25 and $31.75, with $28.75 to $32 as outliers. 
What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. We'd appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign, pop on over to our sister channel, Finances Do Matter, and subscribe there, and have a look at our more recent videos. Even though we're predicting much higher gold levels, and even though it may take another six months before we start to see them again, they're still accurate for the short, medium, and long term. Have a great weekend and a most prosperous week ahead.